Hi, I'm O. This video shows the analysis of BIM with internal hinge. These are the lesson outcome from the video. To determine shear and moment of a statically determinate BIM. To draw the shear and moment diagram of a statically determinate BIM with internal hinge. We will use the method of section in the analysis of beam. When the section cut through a beam, the beam can be drawn in two sections. The free body diagram shall include all the forces on the section, such as support reactions, external loads, and internal forces. And these forces must be in equilibrium. The internal forces, shear force VB, moment MB, and exo force MB at the right side of the cut section must have same magnitude with the left side. And the arrow direction show the positive sign of these forces. This is an example of a statically determinate beam with internal hinge. When we cut a section at a hinge, we can draw the free body diagram at the point B. It is to note that there is no moment at a hinge. This is an example where we are required to draw shear and bending moment diagram for the determinate beam with interior hinge at B. We can determine the degree of static determinacy of a beam by using the equation D equal to R minus N minus C, where D denotes degree of static indeterminacy, R is the number of support reactions, N is number of static equilibrium equations, which n is equal to 3 for 2D structures, and c is number of internal hinge. It is found that the beam is a statically determinate beam. To find the support reactions, we can cut section at hinge or at B and draw the equilibrium of section AB and BD for this beam. We can use the equilibrium equations such as summation moment, summation Fy equal to 0 to solve for the support reactions. In segment AB, we can determine the resultant force of the uniformly distributed load, UDL, which is also the area of the rectangle. Then, by taking moment at A equal to 0 and considering BY and the UDL, we can solve for BY. We can determine the AY by summation Fy equal to 0 at segment BD. We can first determine the resultant of the triangular loading. Since this is isosceles triangle, the resultant is acting at the center of the loading. And we can solve the remaining forces dy and cy as shown. Here, I would like to show you on how to determine the bending moment and shear equations throughout the beam. We will need to decide the location of cut section to derive the moment and shear equations. It can be done by observation. When there is a change in terms of loading, we need to provide a cut section. But within a distributed loading, which is also at the same slope, a cut section is sufficiently to express the equation. Considering cut section 1 1, which passed through section AB with a range x1, is between 0 to 2 meter, we can draw the free body diagram of the section with the length measure from A to cut section is x1. We can also determine the resultant of the UDL as the area of rectangle, which is 20 x1. Then we can derive the moment equations by taking moment about O and the shear force equation by using summation Fy equal to 0. Once we have written the bending and shear equations for section AB, we can determine the moment and shear at specific point where we can substitute the exact value for x1, say at location A, x1 is equal to 0, and we can determine the moment and shear at A, which is 0 and 20 respectively. For B, we can substitute x1 with 2 meter. It is also to note that there is an inflection point in bending moment curvature if shear force Vx is equal to zero. Inflection point is the point where the curve of bending moment change its concavity or change in terms of sign of curvature. 
To determine the value of inflection point, we can use the shear force equation and making Vx equal to zero to get the location of the inflection point x1 and later substitute into the moment equation. Similar process can be used for the remaining cut sections. For example, this is the free body diagram where we provide section 2 to and consider x2 start from A and section BC is having range from 2 to 3 meters. We also need to know the distance of all forces to O when taking moment about O. For instance, the distance of the resultant to O is x2 minus 1. This is the steps to determine the equations for moment and shear. And based on the written equation, we can get the moment and shear at location 2 and 3 meter from A. As the Vx is a constant value, there will no inflection point for bending moment at this section. This is the free body diagram when we provide section 3, 3 and consider x3 start from A and section BC now is having range from 3 to 4 meter. The distance from the loading 5 kN to O is x3 minus 3. Next, shows the steps to determine the equations for moment and equation for shear. Here, moment and shear at location 3 and 4 meter from A can be determined. This slide shows the analysis of section 4.4, but in this case, x4 starts from C. Therefore, the distance of the forces AY resultant of the UDL and the loading 5 kN and CY to the point O is 4 plus x4, 3 plus x4, 1 plus x4, and x4 respectively. And for the triangle uh, loading, we can determine the highest point of the loading at the cut section by using ratio method. And in this case, is 35 x4. We can also determine the resultants of the triangular load using the area of triangle and the distance of this resultant to O is one third of x4. Then the moment and shear equations can be written as shown. We can also obtain the moment and shear value at C and one meter from C for section CD. Section 5.5 is provided and the x5 is considered from D. Section DC is having range from 0 to 1 meter. The height of the loading is 35 x5. From this, we can determine the equation and location of the resultant. Then we write the equations of moment and shear as shown. We can determine the moment and shear values at D and 1 meter from D for section DC. Based on the written bending moment and shear equations, we can determine the exact values of the shear and bending moment at all locations along the beams by substituting appropriate x. And with these bending and shear values, we can plot for the shear force and bending moment diagrams. I hope you find this video useful and see you in my next video.